Okay, my friends, this is going to be exciting. Everybody knows about DNA, but what is junk DNA? Can we understand what junk DNA is? The scientists don't understand it. They say some of it seems useless, some of it has its own agenda, some seems essential for life, but it is 98% of your DNA does not code for the construction of your body. So it's what's called non-coding DNA, and they think it's just junk, and everybody's just a little bit different, and they have no idea why. I'll try to explain it to you. Okay, remember this. This is critically important. Bacteria is the key. Bacteria are living cells, and they're in our bodies everywhere. They have the capability of consuming wastes, getting rid of the garbage in your body of all different types. They can re reproduce by themselves, and they can make more of themselves. They're actually producing enzymes. They produce the enzyme. Listen to this. Better said, bacteria are the factories that produce enzymes. What are enzymes? Enzymes are proteins. All right, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. It could get a little complex. Non-coding DNA means it doesn't, it doesn't create any proteins. Well, proteins are made by bacteria. If you don't have the bacteria, you can't make the protein. So I don't care if you have the codes to make the program or not. If you don't have the bacteria, it's not going to happen. So these 98% of your body is response codes to invasion, to physical trauma, to mental stress, to everything. They are nothing more than RAM. 98% of you when you are born is RAM and it's ready to be programmed as you interact with your environment. That is what the junk DNA is. And I can pro prove that basically because when you have identical twins, it means they're from the same embryo, it's cut in half, they have identical, absolutely identical DNA. When they're born, identical. One changes a little bit, they both change a little bit. And if they're separated, you know, from one family to another at birth, they totally just change everything. Because you're eating different foods, you're living in a different area, you're different, absorbing different things. Your body is reacting differently. So this twin now has totally different junk DNA than this twin. But their 2% original code is basically the same because it that won't change that's the coding that's the construction codes of your body and that's what they don't understand the 98 percent is in the cpg islands and they're just like like program files and they just keep filling up with codes as you learn more and more and more about your life and you interact more and more and you your body has to create proteins to go out and deal with these new encounters, with these new bacteria, these new viruses, even new emotions. Having correct bacteria in your body can completely change the way you see life. They have taken aggressive animals and given them bio, uh, microbiomes from very docile animals the same one and they've flip-flopped them and they've made that one nasty and this one docile and vice versa they can give them the same and a friend of mine had the same thing his son had absolute horrendous constipation problems when he was a kid and he was nothing but trouble and then he went off to school and they were feeding him something different and his father told me he says he came back just a couple of weeks he was a totally different kid and his digestive systems cleared up if, if you're if you're really it appears what happens in the absorption process of of feces is there's a bunch of different things that happen but the end result is you should have a semi soft stool that comes out not a big deal well this kid was so bad that he his father would told me he says he one time he had to actually take the toilet off and I'm not kidding you he said he had to pull the toilet off of its base to get in there because it was just like a stick stuck in the toilet they couldn't get through it nothing could get through it he this kid was so bad with his constipation and that is his microbiome if your microbiome is working everything's fine and that makes a huge difference in the way you feel because of the something's going on there with that that bacteria 
right? Bacteria is basically the chemists that create the enzymes, which are the proteins that do everything in your body. Basically, everything that's done is done by bacteria. They are the programmers. They are the chemists. They make the enzymes. The enzymes aren't there. I don't care if the program's there or not. You don't have the enzymes, she's not going to work. This is the thing to remember. Enzymes are the proteins. They comprised of amino acids linked together in these polypeptide chains. And they're the primary structures, and they determine three-dimensional structures of the enzyme, including the shape of the active site. What happens is these enzymes are so absolutely enormously complicated like this that these are the active sites when they when they want to do their chemistry they have to click to whatever they're trying to attack or break down or whatever I call it click chemistry it has to match this other signature or it pushes away it hits changes an enzyme is a catalyst it can change um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of other molecules within one second, just with one click of one molecule. Click! Pew, they all go instantaneously because it's at the speed of light, because it's magnetism, which is exactly what light is, basically. Don't forget, the whole point of this whole exercise is that if you do not have the correct bacteria, in the right quantities, in the right places, in the right conditions, you will not produce the enzymes. If you can't produce the enzymes, you cannot make the chemistry to do the work that you need to do. I don't care if the program is correct to say, go out and make this stuff. If you don't have the bacteria to make the stuff, the stuff does not get made. Okay, this is really interesting. CPG islands are not coded. Okay, they are just sitting around waiting to be used. Now listen to this. They found that some places, the CPG islands, the increased number of these sites, these CPG islands, is often correlated with low methylation of cytosine in CPG dinucleotides. Now, what does that mean? They're not turned on. So there's a whole batch of extra sites. So it appears that once you use up a site and all of its stuff, you take a big chunk out of these CPG islands. So now when there's an increased number of them, it's because they didn't become methylated and turned on. Now what methylates them and turns them on? It's methylotransferase. That's what turns them on, methylotransferase. Well, what is that made out of? That's a protein. All of these are proteins. All right? SP protein, particularly strongly implicated. SP1 protein, particularly strongly implicated. All proteins are made by enz are, are enzymes, and all enzymes are made by bacteria. So the bacteria really is the thing that's particularly implicated. Now, there's some extremely new research about telomerase and telomeres. Telomeres are a sequence of, of little digit almost like things that every time you, you split a cell and a cell divides it breaks and breaks and gets down to a point where it, it doesn't be able to divide anymore because all the telomeres are gone and then it dies. It's called cell apoptosis and then it has to be disintegrated and got rid of. Well in melanoma, they discovered the telomeres don't go short, they go long. And telomeres are all, always regulated by telomerase. Telomerase is another one of these enzymes, and that enzyme is created by, see it's an enzyme, the enzyme responsible for t protecting chromosomes. That's made by some form of a bacteria. This, this is from Science Magazine, a pretty, pretty new report that says that, uh, this is from November 2022, it says they now just realized that 
in this melanoma, which is a really deadly cancer, telomeres don't get short, they get long. Well, how would that happen? It says the enzyme telomerase maintains telomere length so that cells can continue dividing. So they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. In this, though, they get longer and longer and longer. But they say that they, they cooperate somehow. Cancer cells often have high telomerase activity and non-coding mutations in the TERFT, TERT gene, which encodes telomerase. Now, this is the gene that encodes for telomerase are frequently found in tumors. But this is telomerase is an enzyme. So is, the, is that enzyme just a little bit off, or exactly what's going on with that? They say they often find them in the tumors. All right, again, most people don't want all the details, but here's the deal. There's a, a binding protein in there, a telomere, which is the things that get longer instead of shorter. The telomere binding protein, TPP1. Any protein is an enzyme, so there's a bacteria involved here. It recruits telomerase, which is another one of these enzymes. So here we have another bacteria here. It recruits the telomerase to the telomere. So it brings the enzyme up to the telomere. These promoter mutations created a transcription factor. The transcription factor is where it tells it how to build itself. That's the transcription coding, basically. It's similar to mutations previously identified in the TERT gene. So there's another gene promoter. And that gene also works with another enzyme. Now they say these two work together. And it leads to TERT and a TP1 leads to a synergistic telomere lengthening, which means because they're working together, they're adding telomeres instead of taking them apart. One of them's supposed to take them apart, one of them's supposed to put them on. And instead, one of them's facilitating them going together. Basically, that's the way you could think about it. The co-expression of these two leads to a, this telomere lengthening, indicating TP and TERT promoters' mutations cooperate to immortalize these melanoma cells. Both of those are created by enzymes. I mean by bacteria, which is enzymes, which, and there might be a whole lot of enzymes working together to, to make the chemistry that makes up these gene sequences. I don't know. But I do know all of this is related to proteins, which are related to enzymes, enzymes which are related to bacteria. See, this, this telomerase is, is all over your body, where telomerase in the urinary tract is normally, uh, normally the enzyme responsible for protecting chromosomes and shortening during DNA in spinal muscular atrophy. In the urinary tract, it's, it leads to bladder cancer, detecting bladder cancer by seeing how much telomerase activity is going on. Something in that enzyme is an issue. Now, the only way we're going to be able to determine what is the problem with these enzymes and bacteria is to get a database going of healthy people versus non-healthy people. And then we can determine and focus in on where is that, that difference. What's different? What bacteria do this guy have, does this person have that doesn't have the disease and this person have that does and sooner or later you'll see this one will be up here and this one will be down here and you say whoop that's the thing that's causing it it should be up here that's a, what a database does for you but it has to be significant enough so we have to be doing collections and so forth and building a database and you your health is why you should participate and your kids health because our bio microbiome is being destroyed right now by a whole series of things, including genetically modified foods, which kill the plant life inside of us. Because those foods were designed not to worry about poison. They can eat the poison 
and it won't kill them. They're modified to say, oh, I don't care about that poison. However, once you eat that poison that is on that plant and it gets in you, the bacteria in you says, whoa, 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 what is this stuff? You say, what's well, poison? And then your bacteria dies. And then you're compromised. And then your proteins that hold your cells together in a tight junction so that nothing can invade becomes just sort of floppy. And that's a pre-existing condition. And it's everything in you is done by enzymes, which is made by bacteria. Okay, this is going to make it as easy to understand as possible. This is from a company called Ultra Clear. Bacteria versus enzymes versus chemicals. Well, I can tell you what's going on. Bacteria create enzymes which are chemicals. Now, let's just see what it has to say. This is all you need to hear, read right here. Bacteria are living cells they have the capability of consuming wastes of different types. They can go in and eat up the things that you don't want in your body. They can reproduce. They actually produce enzymes. Better said, listen to this very carefully, bacteria are the factories that produce enzymes. They're the factories. Every bacteria creates a specific enzyme, and it is specific to you, unbelievably elegant. So bacteria, better said, bacteria are the factories that produce those enzymes that do all of these breaking down of products and making the products that make you healthy. When the right bacteria are present in the right quantities, in the right conditions, they produce enzymes much more economically than people can manufacture them. That's what they're worried about, is the things that break down all the products in water to make that water good. All right, Enzymes are good if they're good ones. There's bad enzymes too. Enzymes are nothing more than really basically like viruses almost. Enzymes are a little different. They're just chemistry. Viruses are chemistry, but it can continue to replicate on itself. This kind of chemistry goes and does work, enzymes, but it does not go on living. It can't take over a cell. It can destroy a cell. It can break a cell apart. It can break down dead cells. It can break down food. It can do all kinds of chemistry, these enzymes. That's why you need them to break off the little chunks of telomerase. And somehow, one enzyme is working with another enzyme saying, okay, no, no, don't go away. Here, add another one. Just don't worry about that. Take another one on. And it says, I want to throw this one away. No, 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 don't do that. Take another one on. And they get longer and longer. And it's, there's something wrong with those enzymes. That means there's something wrong with the bacteria. All right, let's go back to the, the uh, junk DNA. The human genome has 3 billion pairs in its DNA, but only 2% make proteins. So they think the rest is junk. The rest seems pointless bloat, a profusion of sequence duplications. They're duplications because they're not programmed yet. And genomic dead ends often label junk DNA. This stunningly thriftless allocation of genetic material isn't limited to humans. Even many bacteria seem to devote 20% of their DNA to non-coding filler. Well, it's non-coding until they have to adapt. This is our adaptation. This is our learning. This is where we store our memories. It says the mystery still surrounds the issue of what non-coding DNA is. Well, it's your memories. It's your, your experiences in life whether it really is worthless junk or something more. Portions of it, at least, have turned out to be vitally important biologically. Even beyond the question of its functionality or lack of it, researchers are beginning to appreciate how non-coding DNA can be a genetic resource for cells and a nursery where new genes can evolve. They're not new genes. They're new programs. But that is what a gene is. It's a program.